Talk to the African Union's overstretched observers and they paint a picture of a ceasefire shot full of holes. They're getting busier by the day. The number of attacks up threefold since September. They're off across the sun-scorched plains towards a village called Tabit. They'd heard there'd been some trouble. Government bombs did this, Tabit's schoolmaster says. Lobbed from an Antonov aircraft, they killed four locals, injured 17, incinerated seven compounds, killed animals. Shrapnel like this slices straight through mud brick and straw. As the United Nations continues to investigate whether genocide is being perpetrated in Darfur, 900 African Union monitors race around a region the size of France, investigating ceasefire violations. Not much doubt what happened here. The Khartoum government frequently denies it uses planes to bomb. When we were here also last time, there were, there were some Antonov planes circling. There were actually two Antonov uh, circling above uh, the village. And uh, you can actually find there are seven crates uh, within the village. And uh, then uh, there is a road with the other side of, of, uh, of the village uh, where you can actually find four uh, more craters. So the government's the pariah yet again. Well, it's not that simple. This village is full of rebel soldiers from the Sudan Liberation Army. Eight were wounded in the bombing of Tabit. What happened here was an act of war, but it was an act of war provoked by the rebels to make the government look bad ahead of this week's peace talks. Questions like who started it are circular, but not pointless. An hour away, the garrison town of Tawila, 80% of its population has fled. Hardly surprising. In an early morning raid three weeks ago, 100 rebels killed 28 local policemen and occupied the town. The government bombed this place with Antonovs too. One bomb landed yards from a Save the Children clinic. Hamid Yaya's leaving with his big extended family and adopted orphan children. They've had enough. 20 more made homeless, the displaced of Darfur, nearly two million of them altogether now, dying, some estimate, at the rate of a thousand a day. Of, uh, no, security. no security. No security. No uh, medical. No medicine. No food. And uh, nothing. Nothing uh, any cause uh, of, of, the, of living. A last look around his abandoned home. Hamad says what's driven him out is not the bombing, but attacks by the government-backed Janjaweed Arab militia. The raiders shot open his safe and emptied it too. And they stole all the cattle, sheep, and everything. They killed and robbed and fornicated their uh, girls and women. Mm -hmm. We have no, we have no freedom. No freedom because of the colour of their skin, too black to live here. Hamad and his clan head west. There's a big camp for displaced people outside the provincial capital. From North Darfur, 100 miles southwest across the Jebel Mara Mountains to Zalingi, West Darfur. In another camp for displaced people, Abdul Karim and his wife are walking into town to the hospital. When my son went to the field, the Janjaweed shot him with a gun. I went to the government to complain, but the government did nothing. Their son, Mohammed, is just 13. The gunshot wound was bad. It damaged his femoral artery. He's lucky to be alive. He's also lucky to be getting surgery. Most don't. This week alone, displaced people like Mohammed have been attacked in camps in all three provinces of Darfur. Security has deteriorated so badly that since the weekend, 360,000 people have been cut off completely from UN food aid. Women are still the ones attacked most often. Rape is still commonplace. We went to collect straw and we ran into six men. They kept us captive until midnight. They took everything from us, our donkeys, even our clothes. 
They took us one by one behind a hill. There they raped us. Now I have pain all over my body. The rapists and ethnic cleansers of Darfur are still at work, despite the threats, despite three United Nations resolutions. The world's biggest humanitarian disasters getting worse. Aid agencies say parts of Darfur are now too dangerous to operate in. With more ceasefire violations reported around Tawila just today, this 21-month-long war is intensifying, and international intervention has yielded little.